Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be looking at section B, questions 1 to 3, from the Junior Maths Olympiad from 2019. That's a really tough paper that's a follow-on round from the UKMT Junior Maths Challenge for students that do incredibly well in that paper. There's a slight difference with the section B questions, where now, as well as having to get the answers, we also have to show working and write out uh, full solutions for our answers, and that adds to the challenge even more. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've taken all of the questions from the Junior Kangaroo from 2019 as well as the Junior Olympiad from 2019 and put them into a totally free online course. So you can go over to that online course by clicking at the link in the description below and you can work through all of these questions one at a time and then watch my video solutions. I've also got a totally free course over there going through the Junior Maths Challenges from 2020 and 2021 if you haven't already seen that and I'll put that in the link, that link in the description below as well. Um, if you haven't already taken the Junior Maths Challenge, the best place to start would be with the Junior Maths Challenge papers and then go on to the Kangaroo and the Olympiad papers once you're ready for them. In this word sum, each letter stands for one of the digits 0 to 9 and stands for the same digit each time it appears. Different letters stand for different digits and no number starts with a 0, so we can't have I or J being 0. And we want to find all the possible solutions of the word sum that is shown here. Now in section B questions for the Olympiad, we also have to make sure that we set out our working uh, clearly, and I'm going to do that to some extent here. but. Uh, just as a word of warning, in these solutions you might actually want to write things out just a little bit more in full sentences than, some, than how I might do some of it here, just because I'm talking through it as I'm doing it. So let's think about the logic of this question though. These word sums, uh, or products sometimes, usually the best way to approach them is just to approach them in the same order that you would think about doing an ordinary addition. So if I was thinking about adding these numbers together, I would start with the numbers on the right and I would add those together. And what we see here is that we must have um, three times whatever the O is um, ending, having its last digit uh, as an O, right? So I'm going to say we need three times zero to end in an O. Okay, so it's very confusing. They've used O here. I don't like that really. Um, this is going to have to be O, not zero. Now, if you think about uh, what happens when you do three times uh, a number, the only way you can get it to end in the same number would be uh, 0 and 5, right? If you do 3 times 1, it's 3, it doesn't end in a 1, right? 3 times 7 is 21, again, that's a 1, it doesn't end it, it ends in a 1, not a 7. Um, so the only options here uh, are that we have O is actually equal to 0, very bit of a confusing thing to write, but I think it makes sense here, or uh, the O is equal to 5. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm going to put a, a line through uh, these O's just to distinguish between um, the uh, O and the 0. Okay. So uh, now, so there's two cases. In case 1, we could take uh, this uh, O then to be 0. And in case 2, we're going to take the O to be 5. And we're going to see uh, if there are different ways uh, of making this work. Right, so in this case, it is actually going to be JM0, 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 and that's going to add up to give IM0, and there's no carrying over to the second column here. So again, we need 3 times M here to end in an M, and uh, so actually, I think because this is such a crucial part of the argument, you might actually write out what 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3 is, and just show that they're the only ones that end in um, the same letter or something. Um, so 3 times m has to end in an m, right? So again, we must have either m is 0 or uh, m equals 5 in this case for exactly the same reason, right? But uh, the o and m are different, and in this case we've already taken the o to be 0, so the m can't be 0. Right, so actually, uh, so we must have m equals 5. Um, then the word sum would look like this. It would be j50, 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 and we'd have i50 at the bottom. So we'd be carrying a 1 here because 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Right, so we now need uh, that 3j plus 1 is equal to i, and we also need uh, with, you know, we need that J and I are both 
you know, less than or equal to nine here, right? I can't, um, I can't go, uh, I can't have i above nine, otherwise we get a four digit number, right? So we could have uh, that j is equal to one and i is equal to four, or we could have j equals two and i equals seven, right? That would give us 150 plus 150 plus 150 is 450, and 250 plus 250 plus 250 is 750. Um, but j greater than or equal to three gives um, a four digit uh, answer. So there's no more uh, options here, okay? Again, you could write this out slightly more fully than I have here, but I think I'm doing a reasonably full solution here. In the second case, where we take the O to be five, let's see if there's any options here, well, it would be JM5, 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 and uh, so I'd have 15 here, and this would have to be, uh, so that to this time, I need 3M plus the one that I carry to end uh, in an M. And now if you go through all the different options here for M, and again, you might actually want to list them out for this, right? If M uh, was to be equal to one, three M plus one is four. If M is two, three M plus one is five. Um, if M is three, um, it would be 10. If M is four, it would be 13. All right, five, it would be 16. Actually, we can't take five anyway because we've already used five, but let's leave it in for completeness. Six would be 19, seven would be 22, uh, eight would be 25, nine would be 28. And I suppose I could include a zero here with a one, but in no case, right, uh, does 3m plus one uh, end in, uh, does this end in the say in an m, right? Uh, so I'll just say here, which is not possible, right? So actually, um, there are no possible digits m in this case. So case two is impossible. So, <clears throat> okay, I'm running out uh, of space a little bit to write this down. Um, okay, let's just move the, um, I can just write it in here. So my final conclusion here that I would write um, at the end would be something like this. I would say, uh, so uh, case two is not possible. And the only solutions uh, are that either that JMO here is 150 and then IMO is 450 or JMO is 250 and IMO is 750. Uh, so you should write this out more uh, in order than I've done. Um, but uh, always important to <clears throat> give a final answer with a nice conclusion to show that you have finished the argument and they're your final answers. The product 8,000 times k is a square, where k is a positive integer, what's the smallest possible value of k? Again, another question here that really comes down to looking at the prime factorizations and thinking about it carefully. So let's just look at the factorization of uh, 8,000. Uh, we can write that as 100 times 80, and then as 10 times 10, and then 80 as 8 times 10, then all the 10s are 2 times 5, the 8 we can write as 2 times 2 times 2, and the 10 is 2 times 5. And we get then that 8,000 is 2 to the 6 uh, and times 5 cubed. Right? Now, this is not in itself a square number. There's an interesting fact that you can learn about square numbers here in their prime factorizations that's really useful, which is that in square numbers, all the powers have to be even. And if the powers are even, it's definitely a square number, right? So because uh, imagine I take a number, let's say just n is equal to three to the five times uh, seven cubed or something times 11 squared, right? If I do n squared, I would have three to the five times seven cubed times 11 squared times three to the five times seven cubed times 11 squared. So I'd have three to the five times three to the five, that would give me three to the 10. Seven cubed times seven cubed would give me seven to the six and 11 squared times 11 squared would give me 11 to the four, right? So I get all of these even powers. Similarly, if I take anything that's got even powers, like let's say I started with five to the four times 11 to the six, I can just halve the powers, right? Say five squared times 11 cubed and say that number multiplied by itself uh, would give this one, right? So actually this must be a square number. So all I've got to do here to make 
uh, this 8,000 multiplied by something, a square number, is make the powers even, right? So um, I could write that down by saying, let's say 8,000 times k then is 2 to the 6 times 5 cubed times k. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2 cubed times 5 squared, right, times 2 cubed times 5 is what I've got already. And I'm going to choose k um, to be 5 here, and then this will also be 5 squared. And that's clearly uh, the smallest uh, value of k that we can find. Okay, um, So there would be larger values as well, I could multiply by any other square number and I'd get an extra square number. Um, but you can sort of see clearly from this factorization and from that argument um, that the smallest uh, possible uh, k for a square number um, is k equals 5. Uh, if you wanted a super convincing argument, you might say, and you knew about the even powers, you might just say that, say like a square number requires even powers, and the quickest way to get that is to do k equals 5. But I think even without that, this is going to be a clear argument for full marks if you've written it as I have here. It takes one minute for a train travelling at a constant speed to pass completely through a tunnel that is 120 metres long. The same train travelling at the same constant speed takes 20 seconds from the instant its front enters the tunnel to it being completely inside the tunnel. How long is the train? Now, there's a lot of information to get your head around here, and so I'd really recommend uh, a simple diagram just to get a sense of what's going on. So let me draw a very simple picture uh, of a tunnel. It's not going to be, uh, uh, it's not going to be a particularly good picture, I'm afraid. Um, but it will just let us see what's going on, and then also uh, of a train that's just about to uh, enter this tunnel. Okay, and we're we're considering two situations: one where the train uh, has done a full pass through the tunnel, so it goes from here uh, to end up uh, over here, and another one where it just enters into the tunnel, and so it just kind of gets to up to this point here. Right now. What do we know? We know that the tunnel is 120 meters uh, long, so this distance is 120 meters, and we want to work out how long the train is, and it makes sense to use algebra here, so let's just call the length of the train x. Now it's going to go at the same speed uh, in both of these situations, it's, it's traveling at a constant speed the whole time, and we're going to use the formula that you must know for these, that speed is equal to distance over time. And uh, so in the first situation, it is taking one minute to pass completely through, right? So in 60 seconds, the distance that it travels is going to be 120 plus x, right? It's going to do the full length of the tunnel so that the front of the train ends up here, and then to get out of the tunnel, it has to go another x, which is its own length. So the distance is 120 plus x. And so the speed here is distance over time is 120 plus x divided by 60. But we also know that it only takes 20 seconds to get from here to the green position, and in that case it's only moved it's only moved x in 20 seconds, right? And so that speed here is going to be distance over time, which is x over 20. Right? But these two speeds are the same, right? It's going at a constant speed, so we must have 120 plus x over 60 is equal to x over 20. And now I've got an equation that I can solve for x. So if I multiply both sides by 60, the 60 cancels out on the left, uh, 20 cancels out here and leaves me with 3x, so I'm going to get 120 plus x is equal to 3x, and that gives me 120 equals 2x, so we've got uh, x is equal to 60 uh, metres, and uh, that must be the length of the train. So I really hope that was useful. If you're preparing for maths challenges, either the Junior Maths Challenge or the Kangaroo or the Olympiad papers, don't forget about my online courses. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. There's free courses there at the moment working through the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020 and 2021 with hints and solutions. And uh, there are other courses about the Junior Maths Challenge and preparing for maths challenges over there already. And over the coming months and years, I'm going to be making uh, a lot more content as well so sign up for the mailing list if you want to know about that or keep checking back here on YouTube uh, or over at the Matsoros website.